Hi guys, it's Evil Trout, and today I wanted to show an example of creating a simple integration test in Ember.js. So as always, uh, once you have Ember CLI installed, just type Ember new, and we're going to call our project today Vault. And what it's going to be is it's going to show us a little uh, password and uh, button, and when you fill it out, if you fill it out correctly, it's going to show you an image. So first we'll go to our new directory, and the first thing I'd like to do is say git init, so that I have uh, my project checked into version control. And then if we type ember server and go to our web browser, in 4200 we have our application. One thing you'll notice is that if you go to the URL here and change the URL to tests, that we get this little test runner here. And this is just included with Ember CLI, and it's really cool because it's running um, a bunch of JS hint tests by default that just lint our code. But if we add tests to it, it'll also run them. So uh, we'll get to that in a second, but uh, let's, let's just start by customizing the application a little bit. So let's open up application.handlebars, and we're just going to remove this stuff, and I'm going to add a fancy title, top secret vault. So I'm going to type input uh, value equals secret, and that's going to create a binding between what the user enters in the form and the property called secret. And I'm going to give it a class. Now, classes are useful for your designers or yourself to do CSS styling, but they're also really useful for integration tests, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add a button, and I'll add a class there too, and I'll call this one check password. And when the user clicks the button, we're going to call check password action, and we do that by just putting those in handlebars like that. And we'll give it some text check password. So it doesn't fit on one line there. Maybe we'll, uh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so then we'll put an HR here. So at the top of our page, if we if we go to it in our browser, you'll see that we have this simple little interface. Now below here, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, an if statement in handlebars, and we're going to say if unlocked, and that's going to take a block. So if the property unlocked is true, we're going to show them uh, a top secret image. I'm just going to paste this in. Okay. If you go into the folder tests here, you'll see that there's subdirectories for helpers and unit and stuff like that. And what I want to do is I'm going to create an integrations folder. And the way that the Ember CLI test runner works is that any file that ends with the uh, with a dash test.js will automatically get executed. So I'm going to go into there and I'm going to create a new file called test uh, secret test.js. So I'm going to start by putting some boilerplate code in this file. Um, I don't love boilerplate, but for integration tests, you just have to put the littlest bit amount uh, to make Ember CLI do its job. So I'm going to put some in here and uh, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So the first line here says import start app from uh, vault tests helpers start app. So vault of course is the name of our application. And start app is something that comes with Ember CLI that allows you to start up your application when doing an integration test. Um, then I just declaring a local variable app here. And here's here's the good part. So module integration secret that identifies this uh, test file with a string name so we can find it. And the first thing we're going to do is in the setup call we're going to set app that local variable to be start app, and then we're also going to add a teardown callback that will destroy the app after the test's done. So remember that the thing that Ember is going to do here is it's going to start up the whole application, have us do things, our integration tests, and then take it all down. And that's what this little bit of code here does. So uh, I'll, get, I'll make this available for you so that it's easy, and then you can just get started. Now if I've done everything right, if we go over to our browser here, we can see that there's actually um, an integration secret module. But nothing's actually happening here because we don't need tests to, f to find. So to get started, we know that by default, uh, the secret image should not show up if nothing's been done. So let's start with a test case that does that. So uh, by we can enter a text description. By default, the image is not shown. And we'll start by visiting the root of our application. That's what that command does. And then we'll say, and then, this reads just like English. Um, we're going to use, uh, there's a find helper that you can use to match on CSS selectors. The image that we pasted had a surprise class, so if I say su find surprise.length, 
that will be zero if there are no elements in the DOM that have that class. So I can make a test here that says equal find surprise.length zero. If I go over to my test rudder, you can see here that it says integration secret. By default, the image is not shown. Now you might be wondering what this big white box is here. Um, it might be smaller depending on the size of your screen, but this actually is a window that shows your entire app as uh, Ember's integration tests are running. If I refresh it really fast there, you might just see for a split second that um, the, app, the whole app is actually rendered in here. And it's pretty cool because if you're running many tests, you can actually see them get executed. One cool shortcut that you can use, um, let's say you're debugging, you don't know why your test is working, isn't working or whatnot, you can go into the teardown method here and you can just comment that out. And if you do that and then go back over to your browser, you'll see that, it inst that if the app is not torn down, it just stays in the last uh, state that you left it. So you can actually just inspect the way things were when the test failed. But in our case, that's not necessary. So I'm going to remove it. So now let's do a little TDD. We want to make it so that if the user enters the password into the box and clicks the button, then the image shows up. So let's write a test for that. The image shows up when the password is correct. So we'll make this test start like the, like the last one. We'll visit the root. Then we'll use the fill-in helper. And this is really useful if you want to type in data into a form or some other kind of thing. So I'm going to say fill in input.secret value. So if you recall, we had the secret value class on our input tag. And this just uses a, a CSS based selector to find it. And we're going to fill in the password with meow. After that's done, we're going to call the click helper. And we're going to click, and our button had a class of check password. Finally, we'll call and then. And we'll make sure that in this case, there is exactly one surprise image. Now, of course, if we go over our test here, we'll see it's failing, which it should. Um, it's not failing because the assertion is failing in this case. It's because there's no check password method. So let's go over to our uh, template again. And we'll see here that um, we declared this check password action, but we never implemented it anywhere. So we're going to make a controller that'll handle this. So we're going to go to the controllers directory and we'll say new application.js export default ember.controller.extend. Now, of course, I wouldn't recommend putting lots of logic into your application controller, but for this demo, it's acceptable. So in here, we're going to define an action and it's going to be called check password. Now, if we just implement it like that, our error should go away in the test window. As you can see here, uh, it's now failing because it's expecting one, but it actually got zero. So that tells me that the image thing is correct. So what we want this to do is we'll say this.set unlocked, which is the name of our var variable, and we'll say we'll set it to be true if this.get secret is equal to meow. And that's all we should have to do to make our test pass. And of course, if we go over here, we'll see it's working. So we actually just did a bunch of TDD. So now if we come over to our app and type in meow2 and check password, nothing happens. And if we type meow and check password, well, we actually get our surprise image. So we know that the application is working, just like our test showed us. But one thing I want to make sure that we also cover is that if we go from a working password and then say check, it should disappear. Now we know that this works because I've just shown it, but we should really have coverage for our integration test as well. So let's add that. So let's go back to the file, the secret test. So now we can add more. We can say fill in input.secret value, not meow. And then we'll say click button.check password. And then, in this case, find surprise.length should be zero. So if you've done everything correctly, we can go back to our tests URL and bam, it's all working. So that's pretty cool. Um, I want to make it clear what's actually happening here with the and then thing, because you might be wondering, well, 
why couldn't I just type equal right after I did click? And that's because Ember at its core is asynchronous. Uh, the router is asynchronous, events are asynchronous, like clicking that button might have actually resulted in an Ajax call or something like that. So what and then does is it basically says to Ember is, I want you to finish all open work. So if you, if you have any pending asynchronous events, wait for those to resolve. And once those are done, then execute the code inside. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, if you like this, uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm Evil Trout, and uh, let me know what other kind of screencasts you want to see. Thanks.